This last part of um, the set of lectures on threads and signals is on signals, and this is one way for processes or threads to communicate. And so when you see the term IPC, what that's referring to is inter-process communication. So signals are just one way for two processes or two threads to communicate with each other. Uh, what exactly are signals? They are software interrupts, and when you think of interrupts, um, if you once you get to uh, at the junior level course on computer organization, you will see that interrupts are actually that term is used in hardware. So every time you hit a key on a keyboard, you generate an interrupt, which is processed by an interrupt controller, and that's all in hardware and then that interrupt controller records what you typed in and saves it and sends it eventually to the CPU. So that's the basic idea is that uh, signals are like simple messages that come from processes and they are all done in software and they're used for inter-process communication. So it's a way for one process to send some short message. Well, actually, it's a very short message. It's just a few bytes. Okay. Oops. All right. So signals are named, and each there's 64 of them, and they start. They all start with SIG. So, for example, SIG SEGV for segmentation violation, SIG violation kill for to kill a thread or a process, term to terminate, and so on. One thing that you're likely to have seen, even if you haven't uh, used kill, is Control C. Control C is the same as SIG int or interrupt. Okay, so a process or a thread that can receive a signal can choose to do any number of things. For example, it can ignore the signal, just forget about it. You say that, well, I don't want to receive the signal. You can have a process, that is C program, for example, can have the system perform the default operation for a signal. For example, control C, the default operation is to kill that process. Or you can receive the signal using a programmer defined a chunk of code and you can decide to do whatever you want to do with that with any signal any one of those 64 signals pretty much really okay you can also once you receive a signal you can send uh, another signal to let's say another process so one thread can receive a signal it can send out a different signal or the same signal to another um, process so the commonly used signals are defined in signal.h, like sig abort, sig alarm, sig child, sig hub, hang up, int for interrupt. User one and user two are the ones that we will use that are available for any program to use, and they are user defined or actually programmer defined. So user one, user two are sort of just open. The others have usually have built-in meanings. You can you can see the list of signals by using kill minus L, I believe. I can't remember now. I think it's either L or 1. There's They do two different things. Kill minus 1 and kill minus L. Wait a minute. Let me just think about it. It's L. It's L. Kill minus 1 will send the, uh, the first or signal 1. So, yeah. It's definitely L. It's, it's kind of hard to tell from here, but it's, I'm pretty sure kill minus L will give you a list of all the signals. Okay, so... What do you do with signals? Well, they're like interrupts. They can occur at any point in the execution of a process. So when a signal is received, the execution of that process is interrupted. And if you have a signal handler, the signal is caught and the signal handler gets called. So you have to do something special to actually set up the signal handler. And that's really the, the main thing that we want to look at. There are a couple of signals, sig kill and sig stop, for example, they cannot be caught. So if you could always catch all these signals, you could have a rogue process that can ignore all signals. Well, that's not possible. There are some things that a program cannot catch, and therefore they're still, they still can be sent a sig kill or a sig stop. The handler may be set by the programmer to be a couple of default things. One is sig ignore. Uh, sig underscore ignore, which is which says, I don't want to um, do anything with the signal, just ignore it. Or you can do sig default. So for example, control C or sig int, 
will have the default behavior is to end the process. So you can set the handler to be the SIG default. All right, so then your question might be, how do you set up a signal handler? Well, the key to all this is this function called signal. And now this is deceptive, sort of, in that what you're doing with the function called signal is saying, if you get the signal, call this function. All right, so signal is just a registering a handler saying that there's two there's actually more oper there's more parameters that you can use but the main ones are the name of the signal for example sigint and say what kind of function what are uh, what function do you want to execute if the program that executes the signal function call is sent this signal okay so how do you use it? You have to pound include signal.h. You have to set up a function, sig handler. This is your function so that when your process gets a sigint function, I'm sorry, when your process gets a sigint signal, this function will get called by the system. All right, so to use signals, have to set up a signal handler for each signal you want to detect. So if you want to detect more than one signal, you have to call signal more than once. So I just want to repeat, I can't repeat this often enough, that uh, the signal function call does not send anything, does not send a signal. All it says is, if, you, if I do get a particular signal, this is the function I want to get called. Okay. To use signals, you can send a signal from a C program using the kill function. So this is different. It's the same idea as the kill command, but it's different. It's a function, C function. You identify the name of the, I'm sorry, the process ID of the process you want to send the signal to, and then you send the second argument would be the name of the signal that you want to send. So just like with the kill command where you would say kill minus 9 to process ID 1025, let's say, the same idea you call kill, the kill function, the process ID would be the 1025, and then um, for minus 9, I think it's either sig stop or sig, ter sig term for uh, uh, to send the control, send the equivalent of a control C it would be sig it. To receive a signal, you have to wait for a signal, and so to do that, you can use the pause function and all it does is check and make sure check and see if there are any signals waiting to be received to use um, you if you want to specify a list of signals you want to set you want to handle in a similar way you can use the signal set this is just a struct defined in Linux so this is specific to Linux and almost all versions of Unix will use sig set okay so if you look at what's inside it, all it is is an array of two unsigned longs. And so unsigned longs are just 32 bits. And so two of them, an array of two of those, just gives you uh, 64 bits. That's big enough for 64 signals. That is, each signal just takes up a single bit. OK, so pretty straightforward. Once you know how to set up a SIG set, you can use all of the stuff that we saw before about flags and remember all of this you can use the bitwise or to set bits in a 32-bit or a 64-bit quantity so in this case these are 32-bit quantities you can set individual bits and that's how you set the two array locations in this struct so you have a struct that consists of two 32-bit quantities. You can set the individual bits just by using bitwise logic uh, using those modes. And then you can mask signal sets using one of these, using pointers to uh, one of these structs. So for example, let's say you want to say that uh, you want to ignore a certain signal. You set a particular bit in an instance of the struct and then you pass that, it passes actually a pointer to that struct object using sig proc mask and thereby set a particular bit in a signal set and you can 
mask that signal. That is, you can block that signal from affecting anything in your code. Okay, so that's about it for this, uh, this chapter on threads and signals. Signals, once again, remember, are a way to communicate between processes or in a way of uh, performing inner process communications. All right.